Meyer, and this is Face to Face. Today I interviewed Luke McCall, the youngest actor to have played both Phantom and Jean Valjean in the West End. Here we go. Hello Luke. Hey. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, great. Well, I've got a lot of questions for you, so let's get started. Lovely. So first I was going to say, you're my first Welsh actor on Face to Face, which is exciting. <laughs> Am I right in thinking that music's quite a big part of Welsh culture? So I was going to ask if that played a part in you getting involved in music and theatre sort of growing up? Um, yes, it's very, very heavily involved. Um, from a very early age, uh, music's introduced. Like in school, you'll sing with choirs and, and, and things like that. And there's a huge tradition. There's a festival called the Eisteddfod in Wales, which is uh, like a it's like a music festival, but you compete. So you like sing solos, solos from musicals. There's dancing, there's there's all sorts. Like it's it's a real hub for music, Wales. Um, and yes, 100% the reason I'm, I'm in theatre. So would you say two of the biggest shows you've done are Les Mis and Phantom? And I was going to say, how does that feel to have covered two such huge shows already like, at quite a young age? Yes, uh, Les Mis was my first uh, show out of college, um, which was a little bit unbelievable. Um, and then I was very lucky. I went straight into uh, Phantom after that. Um, but yeah, they are definitely the biggest shows I've done. And yeah, it's, it's, it's an absolute like blessing to, to be able to do those shows. Wow, I can't imagine. And so in Phantom, who did you play? I was Swing and then I was Understudy Phantom in that one. And what was it like playing Phantom? Amazing, yeah. It's it's, it's something I definitely love to revisit at some point. Um, I managed to get, I think I got 60, 65 shows, 60 or 65, I can't remember. It was, it's one of my favorite roles that I've done. This is amazing. Wow. And I was going to ask about the falling chandelier. Is that as like exciting when you're in the show or does it get boring? <laughs> well, um, I can't actually see it because I'm not on stage at the time. But yeah, it's um, it's it's pretty cool. It is really cool to be fair. Um, so in Les Mis then, who did you play before? And now you're in Les Mis again, aren't you? So who are you playing currently? So when I first joined, I was uh, Fui, which is one of the students. And then I was second cover Valjean and first cover Andras. Um, and now, well, before the pandemic, and I was alternate Valjean then, so I played Valjean once a week, and I was also playing Corferac. Uh, and while the pandemic's going on, until we reopen the new production, we're doing the concert version now, uh, which I'm doing um, Corferac and uh, Understudy Valjean. Okay. Yeah. And I know it's Phantom, maybe even a more iconic role than Jean Valjean, I don't know, but I personally love Les Mis, so I'm particularly interested in that. So how is it seeing such huge strong songs like Bring, Bring Him Home? Um, well, Valjean's definitely vocally much more challenging than The Phantom, uh, especially sort of the first 45 minutes of the show is a bit hectic. Uh, at the beginning, you're on stage for about nine minutes before you sing the soliloquy, which is a really difficult song. And then you go into, uh, after that, you've got Who Am I? that goes straight into the confrontation. So it's like really big numbers straight after each other. So there's no really, no break until about 45 minutes in. Um, but then like se the second half is is lovely. It's a breeze, it's, it's, it's all floaty stuff, uh, like Bring Him Home, which is which is lovely. Um, but yeah, vocally, it's, it's, it's quite a challenge. You have to sort of really look after yourself um, for Valjean. Yeah. Do you have a favorite part of the show you're in? I actually really love the soliloquy at the beginning of the show, really? even though it, it's a, it's a nightmare because of the the length you're on stage before singing it. Um, it is it's a it's a belter. I love that song. <laughs> and does stuff ever go wrong, even when you're playing such huge roles like Phantom or John Marshall? And I mean, I guess you're so prepared and you've done them quite a lot of times, but the little things still go wrong. Um, occasionally, yeah. Hang on, just heard the postman then. <laughs> Don't worry. No, we're good. Um, <laughs> Actually, I tell you one thing that did happen in Phantom was um, my mask didn't quite fit at the beginning. Um, it, we, we were still sort of messing around with with how it fit, and um, in the in the Phantom of the Opera title song, uh, as you're coming out of the boat, you walk to the back and take uh, take your hat off and throw it. And as I took my hat off, my mask came off. And luckily, you're facing the back, so the audience can't see you. But I went to pick it up, and I kicked it further away. It was really, it was, it was like one of my first shows. It was a nightmare. Um, 
but yeah, we we fixed that. But yeah, that was that was something that remained in the memory. <laughs> wow, that must have been so scary. Yeah. And do you still get nervous ever? I know you've done a lot, but do you still get nervous? Well, I didn't. Um, I felt like the more I perform, like the easier it gets nerve-wise. Um, but coming back after the pandemic, actually, well, I say after, it was still going on, but performing again after a long time of not performing live was really quite daunting and like I, I, it was I, it gave me disco leg which is when your leg shakes which i haven't had for years um but yes yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's one of those things that you sort of get used to i think playing a part is a lot easier uh, than doing a concert for example just because you're um playing someone else and yeah. it's not as exposing you know what i mean yeah 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 a slightly different question so i'm guessing you were involved in as you said that is it estead vods um, yeah other sort of amateur dramatics, I guess, when you're younger, how does that measure up to performing professionally now that you've obviously done both? Um, I was quite lucky that I worked with, so I did a lot of like things like uh, BYMT, British Youth Theatre, um, and I grew up in a company called Theatre Maldwin, which is a, a theatre school in, uh, like a after school theatre school in mid Wales. Um, and they were very good at sort of being very professional and, and it's a similar sort of experience as working professionally, actually. They, they were very, um, the, the way the um, schedules were and the way we rehearsed and the way we put the shows on were, were very similar. So um, yeah, that's sort of my experience. I've, I've been quite lucky. Okay, that's interesting. So at the moment, you're working on the new concept album for the new musical for tonight, I think, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're playing Win, and your track is called Keeping Us Alive? That's right, yeah, yeah, it's a great song. Um, yeah, Spencer uh, Williams approached me about it, and um, he sent me the music of the play, and it was absolutely stunning. It's a story that's based on uh, Spencer's great, great, great grandfather, I think. Um, his journey from a place called Trelanwood to Liverpool, um, and then he eventually emigrated to America. Um, so yeah, it's it's just to have a, like a, a, a musical set in North Wales is is incredible. Uh, yeah, but my character Win is uh, he's best friends with uh, one of the um, other uh, one of the main roles, who's called Thomas, um, and they go off to work at the Liverpool docks. Um, but yeah, the, the song uh, Keeping Us Alive is sort of in the middle of Act One, um, but it's it's a, it's a really great song. And I was going to ask, so I know it is set in North Wales, and am I right that that's where you're from? Yeah. Was it special sort of being in a musical that was set in your area? Because I guess that's quite rare, isn't it, probably? Yeah, yes, yeah, it is really great. It's 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 a nice surprise to, to be asked to do a musical that's based in North Wales, having coming from there. There's not, I, don't, I can't think of any musicals that are based in North Wales. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's a real, real treat, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, I really look forward to hearing it when it's finally released. Yeah, and me. <laughs> and um, a slightly different question. If you could play a role in any musical and it not be sort of maybe gender stereotypes or whatever, is there, or is there a role you would play? Alpha Burn Wicked, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the songs, like the, the songs are belters, all of them are absolute. I love her songs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do, I do really love that. Wow. And. If you could choose the next step in your career, what would it be? If you could play any any role? I know you've covered half the big ones already. But... <laughs> I'd love to get involved with Jesus Christ Superstar at some point, because it's a musical I really love. Um, and there's loads of parts in it that I also love. So yeah, that's that's what I'd love to do next. It doesn't really, it's not it's not on anywhere at the moment, which is frustrating, but yeah, fingers crossed one day. We'll do that show. You'll be next to bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> So that was really interesting to chat to you, Luke. Thank you so much for your time. No, thanks for having me. It's been great. Thank you. So good luck. You're doing a show tonight. Yeah, yeah, got a show tonight. Um, it's going to be, it's it's very hot, so it's going to be boiling, but I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, well, enjoy and good luck for the new for tonight and for everything. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye. See ya. And you're not what I asked for. If I'm honest, I know I would give it all back.